So, it's a new series and we are outcasting to general National League fans and, and National League North and South fans. Uh, I'm your host uh, and I'm and my co-host is Marina Hodo. Marina Hodo, how are you doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you today? Uh, I'm personally I'm great at the minute. Uh, obviously we've got a series, we've got this new series going ahead. We're going to be discussing all the latest National League news, um, transfers, everything. We'll be giving our personal opinions as well. Uh, as it says below, if you want to get involved and give us any of your opinions, please leave them in the comments below. I will be very happy to read uh, your comments. We'll read every single one that you have. Uh, I'm ready to get on with it then. So are you, uh, Marina Hoda? Yeah, might as well. What's the first one to start off with? So, basically, as it's the opening episode, we've got a lot of questions from people regarding what we're going to be doing. Um, so, hopefully, it's going to be a week. Clear um, showing how many people are interested. This is going to try get. Um, uh, we're going to try get like uh, players at different clubs on. Might even try get managers on. We're going to try get. Other fans of clubs on, so if you if you're interested in that, please uh, leave below any thoughts on it. Um, just basically everything we're going to be talking about to do uh, to do with the national league. So uh, we'll start off with a few questions then, and then we'll move on to some of the general uh, national league stuff. Then, so the first one comes in from Matt Atkins. Who do you see out of the top seven falling away? Um, so currently in the top seven, you've got uh, Halifax Town first. Obviously, Chesterfield have a game in hand. You've then got Chesterfield. Um, you've then got Stockport County. You've then got Boreham Wood, Notts County, Bromley, and Dagenham. So for you personally, who could you see? Could you see anybody falling apart out of the top seven? I'm stuck between two re realistically because yeah. Boreham Wood. I've never, I'm not seen them play this season personally yeah. as a town fan, but I'd say Dagenham and Redbridge because yeah. uh, personally, from what I've seen from them, they lost to teams like Altrincham. Yeah. They got lucky against us, and mm -hmm. they I think they'll team because it's so tight in mid table. It's yeah. ridiculous in my opinion. So it's going to be really tight out of them. I think Dagenham will slowly fall down. Yeah. For me, there's two sides that are starting to climb up the table, you know, being in and around the players who I think will definitely make the playoffs. Grimsby, currently sit yeah. ninth, obviously you're a Grimsby fan, and Wrexham, who are eighth in the league. Um, both not too well on the form table. However, uh, Grimsby and I went in both games when Halifax played, as I thought they were quite a good side. Yeah. One of the best sides I've seen, in fact. They got that win against Altrincham. Do you reckon that's the push start for the season? Well, for the yeah. second season for Grimsby. Yeah, I thought maybe the draw at, uh, at our ground against you, I thought that could have kick-started it, but yeah. obviously when we played you at the Shea, it was a bit of a different thing. But as yeah. um yeah, the win against Altrincham, I think our recent signings in Danny Amos and Andy Smith, definitely, yeah. who started, were the were key players in part of our yeah. win on, Sunday, on Saturday. Now, we'll move on to transfers in a bit. Obviously, Grimsby have done quite a lot of business, haven't they? Uh, especially yeah. today. We'll move on to that in a bit. But, yeah, moving back to the question. Um, I think the sides that I feel will fall apart, I think I think I have a feeling Bromley. I think I think Halifax are too high yeah. up now. I don't want to uh, make this sound silly, but I think we're too high up now to fall away from the playoffs. Hopefully that, that doesn't come yeah. back to Bromley. Yeah, I um, see that. I think the way we're playing, I can't, unless we weren't on an extremely bad run of form. Yeah, if you go on a run like us, that'll be really difficult for you. Yeah, I think so, yeah, because Bloomsbury were top at one point, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, you've got Dagenham and Wedbridge. I can see them falling apart. Obviously, they're on form at the minute. Personally, I could see Bowen Wood um, falling apart as well. I think you've got to think about it. They've got the FA. They've not played recently. They've only played 20 games, and teams are going to keep playing as they've yeah. got this cup trip. So I think it's Bournemouth. They've also yeah. got the FA Trophy that they still need to play. So many games, they're going to have fixture congestion. Um, and by the end of February, they might have only played two league games. And I think it's too far behind where they've got to win games and they know how many yeah. games they have to win for them to sustain that place, even in the playoffs. Um, I think that there's a three sides that I think are going to fall, uh, that have the potential to fall apart. Bromley, Dagenham and Boreham Wood. So that answers your question, uh, Matt. Moving on then. What makes a promotion candidate? Candidate. What advantage do do you think analysts such as Chesterfield are using helps? That's from Liam, Liam Power. Uh, what's What's your opinions on it? Well, if you mention in Chesterfield, I'd say uh, 
not fixed to congesting because they're out of the FA Trophy due to COVID yeah. things. So I think that definitely helps them progress further yeah. into the season. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I think like other cup competitions really affects the season for people in non-league because they're not yeah. professional most of the time. Yeah, it definitely puts an impact on the teams. And yeah, it seems like, yeah, like Chesterfield, us, and I think there's some other team in mid table. I can't remember who now. But yeah, fixture congestion is a main issue for non-league. Yeah, I think it's the difference between packs, time sides, and obviously full time sides. I feel that's gonna, you know, kick start a season. Like I couldn't. I, obviously, teams have done it before where the part time of they've made yeah. it into the playoffs. Us, in fact, before we went full time, um, when we uh, well, I think it was twenty. Well, back in uh, before we got relegated from the national league, yeah, we lost to Cambridge. That proved not to be good enough to get promoted. I personally think I think you've got to be full time to be honest to really compete yeah. at the table. I just think there's one thing you could say is obviously you've got Ultron and they can probably get the best part time players. Uh, obviously, so players that obviously like their uh, current job, uh, whatever they're yeah. doing, they can get the best part time players. So there could be some quality players out there that are part time. Where us, in fact, like Halifax, Grimsby, Wrexham, they yeah, can't get the best part time players because they just want to stay part time. So yeah, I think yeah. it. That's the only positive to being part time. Moving on, then this is from Owen Edwards. What are what are our thoughts on the potential Joe Quigley move to Chesterfield? Uh, we'll actually move on to that in a little bit uh, because yeah. we're going to be talking about transfer news. This is from Tom. Will Dover get positive points? Uh, it's a, it's a tough one because they were on. I think it was negative twelve, if I'm not mistaken, originally. They've yeah. only got four points if they didn't have the negative points. Mm-hmm. So, regardless, I think it could, it's, it could happen if they get a win because they were close on the weekend against Wealdstone. They were one yeah. up until like the last 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then it's it, there's a, mm-hmm. a chance, but I wouldn't definitely say that they'll get it this season. It might just be go back down and then come back up the next year. I think that's probably the aim now, to be honest. They're 23rd in the league, minus eight points. I think the aim is to try to get onto positive points, uh, to not, in a way, be humiliated in uh, some facts. But, yeah, yeah, I think Dover... It's sad to see sides like Dover. We've obviously... Oh, yeah. Coach, and I have uh, digressed about this in the past. Uh, I don't like to see it. No. Uh, they'll only pick four points up. I think it's hard to yeah, put up right when you already... Um, 12 points behind the rest and then you've still got to catch up to him but to be winless at this stage of the season it's it's not looking good for Dover I yeah. think some, like, some um, optimistic people did actually say that Dover would stay up I personally didn't see it coming but I did expect them to put a bit more yeah. of a fight up but you don't know you don't know what to expect in that uh, um, in that um, basically basically in that uh, situation uh, moving on to the next question, then this is from Keenan, I think it is yeah. best all uh, best um, all round striker in the league. Um, I, if we're saying all round, I will. It, people uh, annoy me with this. I'm going to say Michael Cheek, not Kabongo Shimanga. I think people will criticise me for that, but I think Shimanga obviously he's got his talent with scoring goals all the time. But I think yeah. with Cheek, he's got he's got the height, he's got the strength. And I think he'll he's always like a poacher, he'll always yeah. find a way to score. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely be put under scrutiny because I didn't say Shimanga, but yeah. I think that's probably what you'll say. I think it is, to be honest. I can't not say Shimanga. The only thing about thing is about Michael Cheek is I think he's a target man, isn't he? He's good at yeah. poaching for goals, but he's got no pace, I don't think. I've never seen him score a goal where he's beaten about five or six men where Shimanga, I have to say I have. Uh, I think if you count in like wingers slash strikers, uh, this might be basically comes in towards a probably you might say Jordan Slew at Halifax. So a lot of fans won't agree with me there, but yeah, I think I'll stick with Sh- Tisha Manga to be honest. Yeah, going as an all round striker, I think he's got everything. Um, he's actually quite good in the air for his size. He's um, also yeah, that's what he did against us yeah. when he played us. He just got yeah, the ball in the air, quite a nippy type of player as well. Um, Quite a dangerous player. So, yeah, I think Shimanga, I think that's a, a fair assumption from me. Moving on then, is the National League the best league in the world based on entertainment and competitiveness? That's from Mitch. Competitiveness is really up there, I'd say. Especially yeah. in English leagues, anything can happen. Yeah. Especially, yeah, because like, like, you've got League 1, League 2 and National League. I think them three yeah. leagues, 
like ent- entertainment wise, it's a lot different than the higher leagues. Yeah. But personally, me saying this, I think League One, League Two, especially National League, nothing is like predicted perfectly. Anything could happen. We could probably give the best opinions on this because I'm sure you watch the Championship and the Premier yeah. League and League Ones on, League Twos on. Not many Championship and pre- so-called Premier League fans actually watch the National League. So they all say the Championship's the best league in the world for entertainment. But the National League's the most unpredictable league in the world, yeah. in my opinion. Like, you're looking at some sides in the Championship, Bournemouth. There's, so, there's quite a lot of yo-yo clubs, isn't there, in the Championship? Yeah, like, yeah, Bournemouth, yeah. Gull City were a yo-yo club until recently. Where the National League, there isn't really a yo-yo club, is there? Um, obviously, the Cheltenham are probably one of the only sides to go straight up. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if uh, Grimms we have done that, but there's a lot. There's there's so many sides like stuck in this league, and I think that's where you have to base it off. That I think you've also yeah. got sides coming down and struggling, like Notts County, even like yourselves. Um, so, yeah, to, yeah, uh, we're struggling at this point. Yeah, because yeah. I think Dagenham and Redbridge a few years ago did that. Yeah. They got relegated a few years ago and they got stuck yeah. there. You've even got also... the likes of South End as well, and I think it's yeah. very entertaining that. Sides like ourselves, sides like Bromley, sides like Dagenham, going back to previous years where Barrow, uh, Sutton got promoted. It's very entertaining. Sutton's doing They're really well in League Two as well. Yeah. And it's a total title race at this moment in time. Nobody, like the Premier League or even the Championship, most people say Fulham would win the Championship. But in the Premier League, most people would probably say Man City will win the Premiership. Where I can't actually state something that, over fifty percent um, would actually agree with, and I think same with you. Like if I said Tottenham yeah. would win the league, you'd be getting under fifty percent uh, agreeing with me. If I said Halifax would win the league, you'd get under twenty five percent. Yeah, I think no chance. <laughs> Chesterfield, um, for all we know, Grimsby could come 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 strong and end up winning the league. It so, could. It, yeah, it, it's it's very, unpredictable. It's very unpredictable, and that's probably why I enjoy it so much. Uh, this comes from Adam R seven seven five four on Instagram. Best game you have ever witnessed at the national league level, not including your club. Oh God! <laughs> oh, there's a few. I don't know actually. That's a really tough question. I think. Ooh. Should I start then? Yeah, go on. I, I need to think. Um, I think if I'm gonna pick one, it has to be that Hartlepool Torquay game. Um, oh yeah, I, about that. That. So I wanted a talkie to go up for selfish purposes. Uh, I personally felt uh, Torquay were, should have got promoted that season. I think they were the best side in the league alongside Sutton. But yeah. Hartley was an away day because it's not that far away where Torquay uh, is yeah, nearly Torquay's miles away. I know you can't. It's not a game that I'm prepared to go to unless um, it's a very very important game. So yeah, it's yeah, really hard. I'd for rather go to Hartley. I'd it's rather really go to Hartlepool. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Moving on then to uh, the next question. This is from Jacob0728. If you can't include your own club, which two clubs do you think will go up? Uh, what about you? Me personally, uh, well, I haven't seen I haven't seen Bromley play this season, but Chesterfield yeah. I think would go up if if I'm not having to say Halifax. But yeah. I think Chesterfield have got the team. Well, you can got... say Halifax. If you well, like. yeah, but <laughs> bit of adversity because why not? Mm-hmm. I'd say Chesterfield and with uh, the Bromley. With Bromley, I think they will go up. They beat us three one at their place, but I didn't. I wasn't there for that game. But Bromley, I think they're really tactically like they're tactically balanced in their yeah. whole team and they're really strong. But it could change if a certain management change happens. Oh yeah, we'll we'll move on to that in a little bit now. Um, I was hoping that you would say Halifax. I'm very disappointed. Um, but I think the two that I'd have to say, if it wasn't for Halifax, um, I think Chesterfield. I think I think if they, I think they'll end up. I know they lost to Maidenhead on Tuesday, but yeah, it was an off day. Even Stockport under Dave Shelling, they lost to the Torquay. Um, I think the fact that they're beating sides at the top, like obviously they beat Grimsby at your place, uh, yeah. they got a good point against us. <laughs> beat Bow and Wood, uh, a very important game at the time. Uh, the scrapping out results against the top sides, and I think that's what distances them from other sides uh, high up at the table. Um, yeah, I think Chesterfield. Uh, I think Chesterfield will win the league. However, Stockport, um, they're a different side on the Shalina. 
a magnificent turnaround. Obviously, they've had all the money to spend, but I saw a Chesterfield fan say we they've given us a free uh, month head start, and uh, they're sort of having a way yeah. now to second. They yeah, win yeah. the game and they're two points behind Halifax now. A couple of months ago, Grimsby were top of the league and Stockport were 12th or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they were mid-table of some sort. Yeah. And, uh, and now you won't think uh, about three or no. four months later, Grimsby is struggling uh, outside the playoffs, um, quite a, a bit of a distance as well, and Stockport uh, as, as third in the league, I believe, they are at the minute. So Yeah, they've just gone third after midweek. Mm-hmm. Moving on to the next question then. What's your per- this is from Tommy underscore Robinson. What's your personal favourite away day? Oh, uh, from my from my personal opinion, because yeah. in my videos I always do like a ranking for my away days so yeah. far. But if I have to have a go to, I'd say Barnet because wow. yeah. yeah, Barnet's one of my favourites. Is every time that we go there, we always have a theme for it. Well, I'm like, not told by a Grimsley fan that Spanish. Yeah. Um, Theme, what they want. We had, yeah, we had a mariachi band a few yeah. years ago, and then the the year before, well, was, yeah, the year before that, we had um, inflatables at Barnet. Yeah. Oh yeah, so they're well. I, well Barnet. Mm-hmm. I remember a year when at Grimsby. I've actually talked about this before, but I remember a year when Grimsby came to Halifax. Um, they trashed one of our pubs up. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. Did you go to that way? I think yeah. Was it the one you beat us in, or was it the other yeah, one? Did actually, uh, yeah. We had, we did actually beat you, but uh, it was Grimsby a four-two win, then. Railway station, um, and um, when they came, they were steward, they were yeah. police, police horses. Quite an unusual situation at Halifax because obviously there's probably you and Wrexham who are the only ones who would end that would end up happening with. Uh, yeah. I remember Halifax fans were trying to get involved, but they were told to stand back because uh, yeah, we're, we're the uh, mental fans. We're the you mental ones. Take, uh, inflatables uh, to that game as well. Uh, you're behind yeah, the we that game. Um, we'll move on then. I think that's it from the questions, to be totally honest. Um, we'll move on to the next one now. Now, this is uh, something that I'd like to talk about a bit. Bromley currently doing extremely well in the league for their yeah. um, expectations. They're hoping to get in the football league. Obviously, for the past three seasons, they've been pushing to try get in the football league, making the playoffs last year. Previously, just missing out on the playoffs. Um, he's linked with the Gillingham job, Andy Woodman. And he's a yes, quality yeah. manager. Do you, do you personally feel that's going to affect them if he does end up going? Definitely, because uh, like I said about Bromley just a couple of moments ago, I said that they have they have a certain tactic and how they play, and yeah. it's difficult because they can always just change it up and they'll work with it. We've got the squad, and I'm not sure if the manager does leave. If he does leave, it will be a mess if they don't get a good a right manager in, and it could just shake up their whole season entirely, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it would probably change their season. They couldn't sit sixth in the league, 22 games played, 12 wins, five draws, five losses, 38 goals scored, 25 against, goal difference, uh, 13, 41 points. It's, it's, it's looking good for Bromley, but however, it be, I think they would struggle without Andy Woodman. We've seen the change um, that he's made since he's come into the job. The ta- like you just said, uh, they're tactically uh, to perfection. They're getting good points against the top side. I believe they got a point against Chesterfield as well. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Did they beat Grimsby? Yeah, they uh, their ground. They beat us three yeah. one there. Yeah. And um, they're getting good results. Obviously, we drew to them at their ground. But yeah. you think? I just think they'd struggle without him. I think the tactically, it it needs him. And I think you've obviously got players like Michael Cheek. But if you think about the very many known players at uh, Bromley, unlike your Chesterfields, unlike your Grimsby's, unlike your Halifaxes. The only player we really stands out for Bromley is Michael Cheek on past, yeah. obviously, uh, previous clubs that he's been at. And that, that shows um, how well Andy Woodman has done in the job at Bromley. So, yeah, it would definitely affect him. Uh, do you think Do you think it'll happen? Do you think um, it'll actually happen? It's it's a difficult one because Bromley obviously won't be willing to let him go, but yeah. it's obviously it's his decision at the end of the day. And Gillingham, yeah. obviously, they're League One, I believe. Yeah, yeah. they believe in yeah, the League One. You no, know, the relegation scrap. That's the only thing because yeah. it's all positive, isn't it, at Bromley at the minute? They're hoping to get yeah. in the football league. There's big ambitions for the club. Uh, where Gillingham, they're they're struggling to survive in League One, so he's going into a, di- a totally different situation, a relegation scrap from a promotion um, race. So, 
you know, it, it's a different situation. Uh, carry on. Yeah, it's, it's going to be like, it's either you stay at a club where you're going to hopefully get promoted into League Two and then you can be a professional club or yeah. you go into a massive scrap where they're panicking to just get points. Yeah. And also they could be losing a lot of players because in the window they might have to go somewhere yeah. better if Gillingham's still playing really poorly. Yeah, like for all we know, Bromley could be in the Football League and so could Gillingham could next be, season. Yeah. So. He's got We're to think each other. as well. I think uh, Bromley fans would be very, very sad to see him go. Yeah. We know what could happen. You can have a brilliant relationship with the fans and they can just go just like that. We've seen it with David Shalina. Brilliant yeah. relationship with Hartlepool fans. I thought it never happened. I thought it were close with a club. It were close to his heart. And the next minute, he's gone to Stockport. So that's how yeah. much it could change. You never know. It's what, really? what happened. Oh, yeah, go on. But no, carry on. Uh, it's what happened to us um, a few years ago when we got promoted from uh, the National League when Hurst, he was there for a couple of months and then he got uh, the Shrewsbury job and then he left and then we were just left trying to battle to save ourselves and then it, and he went to Scunny, which really annoyed us. Obviously, you're a, Grimsby, a true Grimsby fan, home and away you go. Home and away. Um, someone's asked here, who does the best food in the league? Oh, it's funny, it's funny this. I, re- I really rate that. Mm-hmm. I, have the, I have a proper table mm-hmm. of all my away days, if you can see that, away teams. And I think the best food we've had is, I think it was um, older shot, but it didn't really make sense because it was just a Nando's. But <laughs> oh, if, a if we're going for football grounds, it was Halifax. If we're going for football grounds, it was Halifax because of the chicken and chips. Can, can I just state that in the home end, we don't get, <laughs> yeah. we get some pies. Um, you got the, I saw it in your video, just a dodgy we will, pie. We'll put pies on. To be fair, they're the best pies I've ever had at a football ground. But chicken and chips is my personal favourite thing to yeah. eat. So I'm very disappointed in that. That it's, it, It'd be different if the away fans got some crappy food that uh, the home fans yeah. don't get. But it's like Eastley as well. Like Eastley came and they obviously like, they didn't bring as many as what Grimsby did. Uh, and they were put at the end of the East Stand, like in the corner, because they yeah, yeah, yeah. brought less than 500 fans. Um, they got some mac and cheese that looked extremely nice as well. Um, wow. And I wrote this uh, Twitter page, I think it's Food uh, non, I think it's food Scran or something uh, for football. Uh, yeah, I might I've seen it that. And all the time, I haven't seen a club on so often as Halifax. Uh, and it's always, I'm, it's like a new club to me, because I'm seeing like <laughs> Getting mac and cheese and Grimsby are getting chicken and chips. There were some yeah. chips there for Wrexham that looked extremely nice, and I'm quite upset because um, we had this old, like, not even a van, it was like a proper stall that went all the way along the uh, south stand. Uh, they did sweets, they did chips, they did chicken, not chicken, wow. they did burgers, pies. It was the best I've ever seen previous to that. It was just some. Yeah. Uh, some some guy that came with a, a burger van, uh, and then that was a huge upgrade for us. And um, we had it, we had the this new stall to start the season. Next thing you know, um, that that didn't get that gets taken away. We go to the Notts County game, and then um, this this like it's like a replica to the old van before the previous one, uh, oh. where they do food. <laughs> Me, I brought me me mate. He's an Huddersfield fan. Uh, we went at half time to see if there were any chips left. Oh no, uh, there's no chips left, unfortunately. Oh. We, didn't expect, we didn't expect this many people to be here. And I thought, well, um, we do usually get about 19, 2000, 19 yeah. 2000 fans, and um, there's the same as that today. So, did you not check? And um, obviously, I didn't say <laughs> that. But um, he, said, he said, but I can do you a bacon butter. Oh, and we thought, go on, then we'll have a, I'll have a bacon butter. And there we go. That's it. Um, wasn't a good start to his uh, first trip to Halifax. Luckily, he did enjoy the bacon butter. It was actually oh. proper with that. Um, and then to drink, I said, oh, can I have a Coca-Cola, please? We only have zero sugar. So that was oh, a, wow. another downgrade. Next thing you know, uh, we go to the Saturday game. Apparently, they've been sacked uh, or something's happened like oh, that. Oh, wow. And then um, I've been told they've been sacked. Um, so then we have the club why. On and hot dogs. Uh, they don't have chips, but the pies are quite good to be honest so yeah. that's one positive to it uh yeah it's, it's good but I, I, I ho- hopefully they can install a burger van of some sort so they should be. if you're have... getting that and we're getting this it should be better for you yeah hopefully hopefully it will be changed <coughs> for uh, tuesday's game yeah. uh, we'll move on then to the next bit and i think it's transfer news now yes. so the first transfer news that we have is it's the big one the one that's been uh, hitting all the headlines at the minute. 
Kishamanga to Hearts, the Scottish team. What yeah. are your thoughts on it? It's it's a massive transfer of rumours. Obviously, he should not be in this league, as we yeah. can see. He's getting average in a goal a game, I believe. Consistently every season as well. It's yeah. not just like a one season wonder. I think he's National League's said like top goal scorer, and that's not a thing you should be happy with because you, if you're doing that, you should be in a higher league. If you've only been there since the start of your yeah. career, it was like four years ago, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a big move if he does leave. Mm-hmm. But with the rumours of also in if he does leave, there are rumours, and I think Chesterfield will definitely with the money they've got as well, they'll definitely bring someone in if he does leave. Yeah, I think. To Shamanga. Now, what you've got to think about is top of the league. It's like the Andy Woodman situation. It's all positive. He'll be hoping to take Chesterfield back to uh, back to the football league where Chesterfield fans feel they belong. Um, I can't really see him leaving unless an extremely good move comes in, like a Premiership club. But yeah. Hearts, so they're a big Scottish club, but they're not particularly a big, big club, are they? Yeah, no, not really. So, why would he want to go to Hearts? Personally, Chesterfield have quite a lot of money as well. I think I'm sure they could compete with Hearts uh, in that uh, situation. Um, he's not out of contract either. I don't know. No, he's not. Um, so it'd have to be some bully. It'd have to be some sum. Uh, the yeah. only way I could see him leaving it, it'd be something like a million, and I don't think any side would want to pay that for Kamanga to Shimanga. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is, Premiership clubs are looking into him. Um, a lot of there's been a lot of rumours in that department, I that. Um, and I think the only way I could see him leaving Chesterfield is if a club came in for him, like let's say a Leicester. Leicester wanted to bring in someone, yeah. but then we also loan him back out until the end of the season. Because um, I don't think Tisha Mango would feel. I don't think he'd want to leave a club like that in that situation. Yeah, and then, it would seem a bit man, snaky. It would seem yeah. a bit snaky if he just left yeah. and never came back. Yeah, and obviously he wants to be the man to take Chesterfield back to the football league, and he's sort of—I don't want to say it—but sort of the sit the what the reason that Chesterfield is so high up in the league. Yeah, I'm is. not saying the rest of the team would do awful without him. I'm not saying that at all. But if you look at the goal ratio, I think over fifty percent of the goals Chesterfield score come from him. Um, I think they struggle without him. To be honest, I think they struggle to adapt. Um, yeah, they do. So I think I think if he was to leave, I think he'd be low back. To be totally honest, but it depends how good the move is. Um, you've got to think of his family situation. Is he happy living in Chesterfield or wherever he lives around Chesterfield? So yeah, I think I think that I, I yeah. personally feel if that's going to happen, there'll be a, there'll be some sort. Yeah, of... if he has to go, they'll try and get him back. He's a release clause, apparently, though. That's the only um, oh, well, concern for Chesterfield fans, uh, I must say. Next one is, this has been going on for quite a while. It's gone a bit quiet recently, though. Joe Sabah to Exum from Solio. Oh, I, Joe Sabara. He's definitely a good player, 100%. Saw him play. He's got, he's definitely a player that, he had a good start to the season, I think. He was top goal scorer for a little bit. Yeah. And his mm-hmm. prolificness is definitely an area Wrexham do need to like improve, I'd say, like an out and out goal scorer instead of position, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a position they need. As I think we oh yeah, Town are playing him on Tuesday. So if he does sign, maybe during that bit window we might get to see him. But if they yeah. do need that cam position, he'll definitely slot in and make that team pass the ball around or maybe even fire a shot in that would trouble the keeper. It'd be a great move for him, I think, going to Wrexham. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they've got potential. They've got high hopes for the future. Uh, you've got to also think about his situation, living situation. Um, yeah. Would he want to go and move to Liverpool or wherever the Wrexham players do live or not play wherever it is they do live? Why would he want to leave uh, Solihull where he's comfortable, probably? I think Solihull, I personally feel they're out of that promotion uh, chase now. That's another situation. Wrexham are probably still in that promotion situation. Yeah, right? still yeah. Um, I think you've got to think. I could see it happening, but um, it's gone a bit quiet recently, and so that's one uh, thing that I probably say that he might not leave. Uh, moving on, then this is another Wrexham transfer. There's a lot, so I haven't uh, <laughs> included every single uh, transfer to be totally honest. Yeah, I've got a few uh, on my list. Yeah, well, there's so. about there's about ten rumours. I, I don't think every single <laughs> rumours are. Uh, a proper rumour. Uh, this one is Callum Guy. Uh, I think it's from Carlisle to uh, Wrexham. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, Car- yeah, I'm, yeah. I've heard of him. He's, I think he's a winger, and it's not a position, in my opinion, that I think they realistically need. They've got players. I think I don't know who they're called now. 
Uh, yeah, they've got there. They got like James Jones. I think it's James Jones, but in my opinion, I don't think they really need to get more wingers. Yeah. It's up to them, obviously, if maybe they've got injuries or if they have a situation or whatever. It would be, it would definitely be a good signing. But again, living situation going from really up north all the way to Wales is not really a, a, a move I'd do if I was in, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm sure there's other clubs as well sniffing around who obviously haven't been reported to. But um, yeah, moving on. I think Cal- I think Callum Guy. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's definitely a quality player. I think I personally feel he's someone they need uh, in that CDM uh, position. I think he's a good player. I think he'd offer something different to him in that CDM world. I think. But could I see it happening? Like you say, moving all the way from Carlisle to North Wales, it's quite a big move. Obviously, there's that Isaac Hayden, who he, I think he knows. Yeah. Um, obviously, they were together at Carlisle. They're definitely building something at Wrexham, and there's loads of rumours. I could go on. I, we could make a full video <laughs> on just Wrexham rumours because there's Bob. There's that with the Bob, resources with the resources they got, they can sign anyone at this point. Yeah, when I'm when I when you even considering and even talking about Jack Wilshot going to Wrexham, <laughs> um, you know the world's gone crazy. Yeah. Moving on then. Um, this was one that I think I personally feel this is fake. To be totally honest, it's a Halifax Town player, mm-hmm. Niall Marta Walsall. I don't know much about him, if you want to speak about that. I don't know who he is. Yeah, I'll speak about him. Uh, he's a centre-half for Halifax. Um, obviously, I, I think I've talked about him before. Also, that is actually a rich club, to be honest. They're just in the league above. They're sort of in a well- relegation scrap as well. He's happy at Halifax. Um, he's definitely happy. His mum and dad go home and away watching Halifax. Um, he's comfortable. He's he's got. He's, he's definitely happy at Halifax. He's a... He's, at, he's the club captain. He's not going to leave to join Walsall in a relegation scrap. There's no reason for him to leave. And the only way he would leave is if at the end of the season we haven't managed to get promotion. Uh, Walsall have stayed up. That's the only way I could see him uh, leaving. I personally feel this is definitely a fake rumour. Moving on then, it's another Halifax Town player now. Uh, this has gone quiet. Quiet. It's, there's been a lot of rejections and stuff. Um, there's been a recent rejection and they've come in and tried putting another bid in for him. Kieran Green... Um, to Markham, two bids have been put in. Yeah, I know about uh, uh, Kieran Green. He's, yes. I think, he's, is he a midfielder? I believe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. He was. He's definitely a good player for for you lot. He's yeah. a player. I think you realistically, he's a starting player that is really mm-hmm. crucial to how you're playing the season, alongside with like people like he and Spence and all that. Yeah. It's it's definitely a move I don't think he would personally want to take unless Morecambe can persuade him to come over to Morecambe. Yeah. And it's like the same thing we're on about. It's like travelling. Would he want to go all the way down? I think it's the way, yeah, down all the way to the west while he's in yeah. central Yorkshire or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I can't see it happening, to be honest. Um, yeah. Morecambe put a first bid in. It was rejected by Halifax, so I'm glad to see that. So they've then put another bid in. There's been no talk around it, I believe. It's probably been rejected, to be honest. Kieran Green's happy at Halifax. I think if we lost him, we're stuffed. I, I think it's a big statement, that. But I personally feel it's true in that midfield. We saw at the start of the season, we lost to Maiden at home. I didn't even think we played poor. Um, but Kieran Green was on the bench. We then played Ultranham. We did win that, but I think we were missing something. Since he's come back into the side and become a regular starter, we keep winning and we keep playing well. And... I think Kieran Green's crucial for us so far. And I, I don't think I think if there's any player that I want to keep, like I've already stated, I think it is Kieran Green. So yeah, I can't really see Kieran Green um, going to join Markham. To be totally honest, now this is an oh we can't keep going over Wrexham, but this is another one. It's coming most recently. Oh, and then, I think it's Armand Daniel Dullet. I think it is. Uh, I think oh Armand Yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. Uh, um, he's signed from he's. This is um, a potential signing from Hearts. Uh, there's a lot of League One clubs. I think Sheffield Wednesday are also looking into signing him as well. Yeah, I think I know who I know who that player is based on just trying you you trying to pronounce it. But yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that's exactly the best. I think it's Armand Nandouille, but yeah, yeah, he's. I think he's a striker. If he is, then I can talk about. Yeah, yeah. I think he played in EFL a few years ago, to to my knowledge. He's a tall striker. Who's, I think if he's going to go to Wrexham, it'd definitely be a good, like a good second striker for Paul Mullen. Because then you got like the little bulkiness of Paul Mullen, and you got the height of uh, Armand. It 
It'd definitely be a good signing for him. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate to mention it again, but the travelling <laughs> Scotland to <laughs> Scotland yeah. to Wales. Scotland to North Wales, um, yeah. It's a, a, bit, it's a bit of a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is where this Tisha Mango and Gat, uh, Armand deal sort of come together in a way. I think if Tisha Mango left to join... Um, oh, yeah, that's Mango absolutely... Mango left Chesterfield yeah. and joined Hearts, then that might be what Hearts are thinking. If they're going to lose this Armand, um, I won't pronounce his second name, maybe <laughs> it's him. Uh, they're wanting a replacement, aren't they? And Tisha Mango yeah. is probably the perfect fit for them. That's the only way I can see it being linked, to be honest. Um, I could see him going to Wrexham, but I think you've got to think about this not this North Wales uh, business. This is probably the reason that certain players don't want to the join. Problem with going to Wrexham. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only problem. That's why recently, obviously, they haven't always had this money. Uh, no. That's why they don't attract too many um, players, uh, unless they're obviously Welsh or live in Liverpool or Liverpool and or whatever, yeah. or Manchester. Uh, the final, well, we've got a few more now. Uh, this one is a done deal. Howie Cardwell has joined Southend yes. from, um, I believe it's Darlington. I think it's Chorley. Oh, uh, yeah, it's sorry. Chorley. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Chorley are struggling, I think, uh, to my knowledge, in mm-hmm. the National League North. In the league, I, think. I, I know Harry Cardwell. He used to play for town when we were yeah. in, in League Two. He didn't do much for us. If we had uh, more, op- uh, like more choices with strikers and we had better players in that mm-hmm. time. Since he left, he's been on fire for them. He's been linked with Chesterfield as well. But signing for South End, that could kickstart South End season. They could go up the table, but I think they're out of playoffs by now. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely a p- player they need. Yeah. They're only having Reese Murphy as their main striker. Yeah, like I said with the uh, Armand and Mullin thing, it's a good second striker having a tall yeah. striker alongside a one that just can run through the defence. I think it's someone that obviously offers something different for Southend. They need a they need a signing that's gonna kick on the season in a way because the only promising player so far for Southend this season is Reese Murphy and he hasn't exactly kicked on like everyone expected him to sign him from, obviously Yeovil. Um yeah, I think it's a good signing for them, especially long term as well. Um yeah. to my knowledge he hasn't done anything special for Charlie. I might be wrong there, but I'm sh- I think I think he scored 12 goals on it, as his, or seven goals or something like that this season. Something, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know, to be honest, but I know he hasn't. He's not been hitting uh, the high mark seeing that national. I'll league. look it up. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll look it up now. But I'll move on then. Uh, yeah. There's obviously Oli Palmer linked with Stockport from Wimbledon. Yeah. Also. He's a good striker for Wimbledon. Uh, there's a lot of strikers at Stockport are looking at. I think Luke Armstrong as well. Uh, they were looking at him at the start of the window. Uh, Oli Palmer would be a would be a good fit for them. I, I can see him signing one of them sort of players. It's funny though because Wrexham and Stockport haven't he, haven't heard any business from them done so far. No. Uh, um, can, can you digress on that? Uh, Oli Parby, yeah. Uh, again, he used to play for Town in non-league when in our I think the year we lost on penalties to Bristol Rovers. He was definitely a good. He definitely trans like transformed our season because we were slowly starting to drop off and then we brought him in I think it was in January and mm-hmm. he definitely got he got crucial goals to get us to the playoffs let alone just try and keep us in a fight to go up he's like he's got he's got the power to score he's got height he def- definitely is one to like score a header from a corner yeah. or anything it'll definitely be a good signing if Shimanga does go yeah. it'll, it'll be the one I think they need mm-hmm. I think uh, there's a, there's another rumour now. Uh, not rumour, so it's already done. Burgess joins Grimsby from Port Vale until the end of the season. Now, I'll let you yeah. talk about this because uh, there's a lot of rumours, though, isn't there, at Grimsby and a lot of signings that have happened. But uh, Burgess yeah. has been hot on that. There's been a running joke around the club saying we'll call, we'll call ourselves Port Vale FC because we've mm-hmm. signed three lads from Port Vale this season. Yeah. And Burgess yeah. is one of them. He didn't play much against Altrincham. Over in in the game, he came on as a sub for like the last five minutes after yeah. the two goals. But in the minutes he played, I noticed he would he will like he'd be really passionate to play for the club. He yeah. was running for the badge in then five minutes, mm-hmm. and he's definitely one that I think will if he starts, he'll be a good player for the future. Tristan Abraham now. Now I personally yeah. feel it's a good signing for Grimsby. Uh, but I will let you digress on that because uh, obviously yeah. I just for you. What are it's your thoughts for us? Yeah, uh, I've got not really much to comment on it because I, I know I know of him. He played for Newport, and I think we got him on for Carlisle. It's on loan until mm. the end of the year. Yeah, and 
I know, I know when he played for Newport, I don't really know much about him, if he's prolific or not, but I heard about him. He said he's done, according to some of my mates, he's done some of, that's really annoyed people yeah. in, from their opinions. But I think he'll definitely, it's, it's, part, it's an area that we needed all season. We didn't get it. We only got, realistically, Ryan Taylor's our main striker. We didn't really have anyone else at only youth. And we play McAtee striker, which is yeah. not really his normal position, but he's been thriving in it. I think Abraham is definitely a signer that we needed. Yeah, I think, obviously, I think when they played Halifax, Grimsby, that, especially in that first game, they weren't missing a striker. Like, Grimsby should have equalised before that. Uh, obviously, it was a great header by Maguire, Drew, yeah. but they should have equalised uh, before that. I think we did well to hold out that long. And even when they came to the Shea, I don't think they offered as much uh, going forward, but you could tell yeah, they were missing a main striker. And I think this could really kick on Grimsby season now. I believe that's it for uh, transfer rumours and signings. Yeah. Uh, we've only picked the ones that were the best ones we feel, because we can't be going all day picking all the transfers. Of why we've we'll have another 50 ones from Wrexham, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even Stockport. There's so many clubs now with rumours. Yeah. Um, we're going to review the table and look at certain other leagues like below us now and the league yeah. above. Um, but personally, let's firstly go on to National League at Nob. Gateshead, top of the league. Uh, hopefully they don't come up because the away day is shocking. I've only, I've been there twice and and it's, well, it's from my young knowledge. I only went there like seven years ago, yeah. and it was a playoff. We had the playoffs uh, it, there, and it wasn't the best away day. It's literally a, it's Olympic Stadium, and yeah. I don't think it's suitable for a football ground. Obviously, you got West Ham with their Olympic ground, but yeah. it's got roof. <laughs> That's yeah. the main. Annoyance because you're up north, there's loads of rain, and you've got no roofs in the stadium. I think that's a main issue with it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm, 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 I've actually never been to Gateshead to be honest, but um, mm. I wouldn't want to go to Gateshead. Um, it's not a very good away day, it's not that far away. That's the only positive, yeah. Too. That's the, that's the benefit. It's so far away from the pitch, you can't get an atmosphere, <laughs> yeah. It's Instead, really poor. Can you just imagine being a Gateshead fan? Now, I don't want to disrespect any Gateshead fan, but if I was a Gateshead fan, I'd just uh, play it on to them away days, to be totally honest. Because yeah, I went, yeah, when I went there, they only, because you got the whole stand, they only used the side stand and we were on the opposite side of the side stand. It was literally just a massive gap. Yeah. And also, the only thing that good there was the Angel of the North, and that's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. a lot. I know a lot of Gateshead fans are actually Newcastle fans as well, or Sunderland yeah. fans. That's uh, a spirit of non-league, though. You've got to support yeah, your local. Spirit, supporting two clubs. Uh, I did actually want to talk about that a little bit. Now, obviously, you. what's your thoughts on supporting two clubs? Like, I think a lot of people do do it in our division, support a non-league club and they support a Premier League side. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? It all realistically depends on who you support. Because yeah. there's like me personally, I'm a Grimsby and I'm a Liverpool fan, but yeah. I don't, I won't say I'm like a massive Liverpool fan because I've been to one yeah. of the games or something. But yeah. if you want to, if you want to enjoy the proper spirit of football, I'd personally say support your local team, yeah. and then you can actually get a true spirit of what football is actually like. I don't personally understand it. I don't understand supporting two sides, but actually properly supporting them, unlike yourself. Um, I'm Halifax through and through. I do like other sides, so I, I personally like to watch West Ham. I think they're a good side. I think it's yeah. a good atmosphere. They're a historic club, a Premier League side. I like various championship clubs as well. But I wouldn't say I'd ever, like, personally want to go week in, week out. Like, if I got offered West Ham tickets, for example, I wouldn't go and support West Ham instead of Halifax Town. Uh, I think yeah. that's the same as, like, yourself, in a way. But... Um, I've, I just don't understand it. Um, I'm not a big fan of your people who support your Premiership sides and have nothing to do with them. Like someone supports Liverpool and Liverpool's the only team and they live in Brighton or whatever. Um, I, I personally just, I, I think it's about football, it's about the atmosphere, it's about enjoying it and it's about grinding up that football py pyramid for me. Like being a Grimsley fan, you know, looking at them away days and stuff, that yeah. he's playing at home, there's never no plastic stadiums like your seaters and stuff. It's really uh, good with us as well. Yeah. It's really good with us as well because we've got a massive away fan base, as you know. Yeah. We've yeah. We, like we've built up a massive fan base and I don't think we, I'd miss an opportunity to go to an away game if I had. Yeah. But obviously, sometimes it's out of my hands because I yeah. can't really take it. Like, have you ever been to like Dover or um, anywhere as far as that like, Torquay or? Uh, the furthest one I've been to is Aldershot, but yeah. uh, my mate, uh, he's a really hard cover. He's been to Torquay, he's been to Dover. He went to Aldershot on a Tuesday night, which is mental, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it's definitely uh, 
good for us if we bring like minimum 300. We always think if we bring 200 or 200 on an away day like Torquay, we think it's poor support. That's yeah. how mental That's we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to say so. That is it is pretty good. But yeah, well, it's brilliant in it. Like with the atmosphere, like obviously when you go to Aldershot, it's quite far away. It's a good away day. I'm not saying that, but you can create an atmosphere and it's great to see. And you can go week in week out and support the team and. I think that's what football's about, personally. Yeah. I think even like, your football league side, like your championship, it's great for them to go away. And like whatever happens with Grimsby, they'll always have a good fan base where they'll have an atmosphere and everything. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's some that's my I also football. Yeah, I also think that also uh, with being like a top six fan, you don't have like the spirit of like relegations, playoffs, yeah. drawing a big team in like a cup game. Like in the yeah. Carabao Cup when like yeah, that's, what about as well. like, that's like like with Kidderminster, they've got yeah. West Ham at their ground, which is some yeah, of the massive for them. Yeah, it is brilliant. That's something about football. Like even Championship clubs. Like I was yeah. speaking to some Huddersfield fans today, um, and they said I couldn't care less about the FA Cup um, unless we started it started getting serious where we're getting to like the quarterfinals or semi-finals. It's like us with the FA Trophy. I don't think either of us are that interested in the FA Trophy unless no. we start getting to the semis and the final. Um, but yeah, I, I personally feel it's football is about grinding up that football pyramid, and that's why I enjoy it so much. Um, and yeah, we get them FA Cup uh, journeys and them history moments where teams in the Championship don't have that. Like, like honestly, they've been in the Premier League before, haven't they? So, they've played yeah. Man City most recently. They've played Chelsea. They've played all these top sides where, uh, like, we've still got sides to play. Like, we've never played Arsenal before. We've never played Chelsea before. No. Yeah. We've never played Liverpool. Um, we've played Man City, Man United. Yeah, we've, we've been lucky that we had Chelsea away in the Carabao Cup. We were really lucky with it. Plus, yeah. like, Crystal Palace as well. It's not like... it's They're a historic club, but they're not like a Chelsea who've won Premier League, yeah. Champions League and all that. Yeah. It's still like we brought, like, 6,000 to Crystal Palace, which I think yeah. is... Like, even we had the late kickoff. Yeah. And we also... I also see that game as the first game that English VAR actually took place. Yeah. yeah. Um. We'll move on now to, like... Well, we're going to look at the National League South. Um, I, I think... Who is it top of the league? I think it's... Um, I'll yeah, it's Dorking. They're top of the league. Yeah, Dorking. Um, in the National League North, though, however, there's Brackley behind them. I personally don't want them promoted. That's three hours away from yeah. all of Halifax. AFC filed and Charlie and Kidderminster then to follow. Uh, I think at this moment in time, it's probably looking like either Brackley or Gateshead, and then I think Kidderminster will win in the playoffs. I think they've got yeah. the resources with this FA Cup. Some of the signings they're making, like the sign that Dimango, I think it is from um, Ultra and yeah. Uh, there's, they've got the resources, I feel. I think some of the players they've brought in in this January transfer window, I think Kidderminster will be good enough to get back. There's also, like, there's also teams that like they shouldn't be, like, they should be where they are. Like yeah, Welling, yeah. I think, were in the National League a few years ago. Like you, when you yeah. got relegated a few years ago, yeah. you shouldn't have been in that position. Yeah. And also people like Bill O'Ricky, like they've got loads of money and they're struggling massively at the moment yeah. in yeah. National League South. It's it's funny when you see sides like York, like in the National League North. Like, yeah. York's a big club, like they've been in the Football League in the past um, and now they're struggling in the National League North. We were in that situation before having to grind all the way up the leagues back to where we feel we partly belong in the National League, hoping to get back where we were before we folded and back in the EFL where we obviously want to be. Um, we move on then to the Football League uh, side yeah. to which we might come down uh, this season. So, in the Football League, I, I believe it is... Oh, I think I believe it is a Alderman, yeah, Alderman Scunthorpe are the two at the bottom yeah. right now. They're yeah. they're both separated by point, and then they're three points off. I think out if, of the you, relegation zone. if you didn't get promoted, I think you'd want Scunthorpe to come down, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's definitely the one that we need because we, yeah. um, we lost Alex Hunt, our centre midfielder, to because of uh, the wages business because he got a new yeah. contract and he's gone to Oldham, and we, he's basically saying that he's trying to relegate Scunny for us. Because he knows yes. how much he loves the club. Um, I'm at Colchester. I need them to stay away because um, they're quite stubborn. It's not right away, though, to be fair. Though. <laughs> no, I'm thinking uh, there's all of them at the bottom of the league. We'd love that because I think, I think, I think they would actually be our closest away day. We played them in a pre-season friendly um, a couple of seasons ago. Um, Barrow, I've, I've, we've had I don't them. Want to get to Barrow. Barrow's, yeah, Barrow's not the one that we need. 
the even age, I think they're out of it, to be totally honest. However, there's there's games in hand, etc. Yeah. Carlisle, I think they're out of it. Rochdale, I'd like to see them come down. That's quite they do have, They do have three games in hand, though, on Stevenage, and they have two yeah. on Scunthorpe, so they should be okay. I mind. think at the minute it's Oldham and Scunthorpe looking yeah. to come down. Um, Oldham's also got the owner, ownership issues as well. They're protesting yeah, all the time they need them gone. Yeah. Uh, I think hopefully someone can buy them out yeah. uh, in the future. We'll view our actual league now, the Van yeah. Aram National League. Um, right, so the current standings in the National League, obviously you've got Halifax top, Chesterfield to follow. Uh, there's a lot of transfers that have gone on that might um, consider the league positions in the upcoming weeks. There's a lot of big games um, coming on. We're going to start doing a mini thing where we rank our best game, uh, fans yeah. of the week and... Uh, upcoming game that we feel is going to be interesting. Now, personally, my fans of the week so far, uh, I think from two, I think it has to be Tuesday night, and I think it has to go to Chesterfield. Three hundred and twenty-one uh, away fans for their uh, for their circumstances. I think yeah. to go to Maiden and take three hundred and twenty-one. Yeah, Tuesday night. That's Maiden. quite impressive for a Tuesday night. They're creating a bit of an atmosphere as well. I believe it's just it's about two and a half hours away. I think it is uh, from Chesterfield. Yeah, for, for us it's. I think three and a bit hours for a month yeah, from my, was, my place. Back really four hours for us. Uh, obviously, yeah. we play them at the weekend. Um, uh, what is your fans of the week, then? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really have my word on it. I obviously made. They're not made nice. Um, Chesterfield bringing that many to to their and yeah, I, I will have to give it to Chesterfield. They're only yeah. out of the midweek this Eastley, and I know they don't bring many fans. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give it to Chesterfield out of fans of the week bringing. There's, there's game of the week now. Now um, we can include Saturday as well. Saturday's yeah. game, but I'm actually going to stick with that Chesterfield Maidenhead game. Maidenhead Chesterfield. Yeah. And I think after them, just I'm so pleased that Maidenhead have actually won because we're still top of the league at this moment in time. Um, but now, so, yeah. As long as Maiden Maidenhead, you've done us a favour, but please uh, don't defeat us on Saturday. That would be most appreciated. Yeah. But yeah, it was an entertaining game, obviously. Chesterfield were 2 0 down, they came back. Uh, so I was kicking myself, thinking, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> and then Maidenhead, and the next thing you know, I've seen Maidenhead are actually winning. Um, and then I was over the moon on that Tuesday night. Um, yeah, you know, I had the get- notifications for it and I, I saw that we were 2 0 up. And it, it was just, I was watching yeah. um, Alex's of DN35 podcast. I was watching yeah. his podcast. Yeah. And they, they kept it up. And, <laughs> and then I saw the next check, I just said it's 2 2. I was like, oh, why? Yeah. Why do I bother? And then I see it's three two maiden, and I just couldn't believe it. It's, I watch Chesterfield as if I'm still top of the league. Yeah. It's really sad. Yeah, it's because you're hoping you, you're sort of trying yeah. to consider yourself as a league candidate. Yeah, we uh, are. Give yourself a bit of positivity. Definitely. I'm sure we will be up there uh, in the upcoming weeks after they've played a few more games. Uh, game of the week then, uh, upcoming game. I'm, I'm going to give it Stockport versus Dagenham. I think it's got everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, an entertaining game. Dagenham, they lose the sort of the sort of staying in that same situation, that seventh place, Wrexham would probably go above them. Uh, and Grimsley could up, actually go above them if they win games in hand. Uh, Stockport have the opportunity to go. To, uh, op- opportunity to go. They'll stay third, but they also have games in hand. Uh, it really tell me where Stockport are. Obviously, they're playing a good side. Yeah. Dagenham. I think if Dagenham beat Stockport, I'd start to feel a little more confident about us winning the league because Stockport are there, those high flyers who've come stronger yeah. most recently. Uh, there's obviously Notts County as well doing well so far this season, but I think if I'm going to give um, a game to upcoming that I'm looking forward to, I think it's got to be Stockport Dagenham and it's also on the TV as well. What would yeah, yours? Mine personally, I'm I'm going to stick with with my club Grimsby Bromley. It's definitely yeah. one that's. A game to watch alongside with Dagenham. It's like that little playoff window. It's yeah. a big game to, to like just to to, uh, to decide the the playoffs. But yeah. I'm also going to say um, Altrincham Torquay. It's a mid-table yeah. clash. Yeah. And also like with Torquay, they've compared to their season last season, they're yeah. miles off. Mm-hmm. And it, it should be a game that is going to be a tight one. But I'm going to stick with Grimsby Bromley as Bromley yeah. can give us a good go, and I think we could actually snatch a win out of that one. What's your thoughts on Torquay fans saying that they're late playoff candidates? Torquay fans, uh, I, they've not played us yet, but Torquay fans, uh, it's a it's a tough debate. I don't know. Yeah, the positivity and something to grind for. You can, always be, you can always be hopeful. <laughs> they've played more games and they can't sit tw- uh, 12th in the league on 31 yeah. points. 
I personally can't see him. I think they're too far behind. I don't think there's been much of a change. You haven't heard too much um, transfer window uh, no. news from their point of view. So yeah, I think I, I can't see Tor keeping even no. candidates. I think they'll. I think they'll be in this same twelve to fifteen sort of position. Uh, yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, we'll look at some of the tape, the actual table now. We'll move back onto that. The relegation scrap, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're out of it. Kingsley, I personally feel they are probably out of it. Weymouth, uh, a lot of Weymouth fans, um, I, I actually got a question. Uh, I forgot to actually ask this. This is from a Weymouth fan. Um, they've had managerial change. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Do you actually think they could be um, latecomers to survive? Because... I think it's sides like Kingsland and your Weymouths and your men that do just yeah. want to survive in this league. With Weymouth, I think I think the previous manager was Brian Stock. And yeah, I think they got rid of him Monday or summer. No, 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 Monday. Yeah, probably. And it's it's going to be tough because the teams that are above them, they're going to have to have a really, really like poor run of form. Yeah. The Weymouth have to somehow kickstart their season and get wins and wins to really have a chance of staying up. Mm-hmm. And I do agree with, with Kingsley and Nev minnows in like in comparison with the rest of the league and there i think they're out of the picture to say up in my opinion yeah, unfortunately for them um weymouth new manager they've got them they got a kick in the foot didn't they against eastley um yeah they did. disappointing obviously they climbed back to two two against eastley obviously eastley had 10 men they took advantage yeah. of that but eastley managed to scrap scrape it out in that situation to come from two nil down to two two and then to lose, I can't see a side staying up, unfortunately. No. Especially when Easley came to the year. Um, they might have just had a poor game, but I didn't think too much too easily, to be totally honest. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see Weymouth. I can't see Weymouth staying up. I think Maiden wow. and I think Maiden and Ed have got have got the uh, confidence and have got that. They have the feel that they can actually beat anybody in this league. Yeah. Um, unlike Weymouth, like we beat them two 0 It were it was like a pre-season friend. It were we just knew from the yeah. kids that we were going to win that game, especially after. It was at, just after we'd beaten Notts County in just brilliant circumstances. To be yeah. but we played Weymouth at the start of the season because our first game got cancelled mm-hmm. and the Weymouth was our actual first game. Mm-hmm. It was literally, we played out of our skin and we just couldn't find the goal, which is what we've been like all season. Yeah. But with teams like Maidenhead, they will beat uh, really good teams but yeah. struggle against the teams around them. It's like mm-hmm. us, pretty much. We play really well against teams like... Obviously, Halifax, North County, we'll give them a go. But we struggle with teams like Wilston and Aldershot, which is what's happened. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, yeah, I think I think Wim's that they're definitely down. Maiden are too strong. Southend are too big of a club to go down. Wheelstone are probably just out of it. I think. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I think it's definitely the three who are at the bottom now, and the three who are going to go down. The playoff chase, and obviously we've been asked a few questions on this. Um, North County, they're coming strong. Uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah. It's 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 looking promising for them. They've been stranded in there ever since they've got down, mm-hmm. and I think they've got the squad that they finally need. They've got play. They've got Ruben Rodriguez, which I think is like the National League version of Diogo Jota. Yeah. But, and then I think it's Carl Wooten. I think his name is. He's yeah, up there. Well, top goal scorer. That's one thing I must yeah, say. Easily, yeah, easily. Yeah, home with the links. Mm-hmm. But I think with that team, it's definitely a team. That will go up, but with team like in the national league, it's like league two. That any team in the national league can do well in league two, or struggle in any like in these leagues. It's really difficult to predict. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a horrible league, isn't it? The national league, yeah. Grimsby will know that. Like once you've got promoted, we've seen a lot of sides to just fly through the leagues. They grind up them leagues like Luton, Cambridge, uh, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers. Uh, Grimsby will. I bet you were very disappointed to get relegated last season because um, only two teams get relegated. You must have a whole yeah. season to it's, get. Relegated. Yeah, it's it's difficult going down, but yeah. we were playing shock in that season. I think yeah. one thing with our club is our fans play yeah. a part in the future. We we think us fans are the twelfth man in the club, and having yeah. COVID and the no fans, I think that's really affected clubs that actually went down that year. Yeah, and I think that's a main problem with what happened last season. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that more or less wraps up the video and the first podcast that we've ever done. Um, I think it's done well, so I think we'll do another one uh, next week. Uh, I think we'll keep trying to this a weekly thing. Marina Hodo, thank you for joining me. I think it's been great. Um, anytime, mate, anytime. Yeah, uh, we'll do it next week then as, again. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, 
thank you to everyone that's going to watch this video. General non-league fans, I know it's basically a Halifax thing, but please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out, and it's a regular podcast that we will be updating. Yeah, agree with Marina Hoda. He's a great there. Subscribe. People to subscribe to Halifax. So I'm sure you can, uh, fans out there. Thanks for joining me once again, uh, and I'll see you later.